Hi guys, Sandra here from Creating Spain. Now today I'm doing a video on Affinity Designer and I'm going to show you how to create brushes in Affinity Designer. Let me explain. Affinity Designer has three different personas. This blue tab up here indicates that I'm in the vector persona. The next one along, that means I'm in the pixel persona. And the next one is the export persona. We'll get to that later. Now at the moment, I am dealing with the vector persona. So I have something here which you'd probably think is not going to create a very good brush. As it happens, I made a brush from it and it actually worked quite nice much to my surprise. Now, if you're not familiar with Affinity Designer, it's worth noting that down on the right hand side, bottom here, there's a question mark. And if you tap and hold on the question mark, you'll get all the various different menu meanings for the symbols. The other thing is, if you go back to the gallery, there is another question mark here, which you can tap on. And this gives you a whole raft of information. If you tap on it, you get further information. There are some videos in there and there are explanations of pretty much all the tools. Now, as I said, I want to make a brush from this. And what will happen with the vector brush, it will actually be able to create a brush with those very same colors and patterns. What I need to do is to create what they call a slice. It's basically a cut selection that you can play around with. To do that, I want to go to the export persona and this bounding box comes up. Now you need to realize that the bounding box has got four little dots at the corners and anything included in the boundaries between those dots is what it's going to pick up. So I'm going to make this one relatively small. Now included in that is that blue stripe. So whatever is under that blue stripe is also included. You can get away with having a little extra width in there because you can get rid of that later. But the depth of it from top to bottom is the bit that you have to get accurate because if you don't, you cannot amend that later on. So I'm going to choose that to be my selection. So over here we have the layer menu and you can see I have a background and I have a slice. Now if I tap on the little square there, you can see the background as it is and you can see the slice. If I tap on that one, that's the background selected. Tap on that one, that is the slice selected. I only want to export the slice. I'm gonna switch that off because I find it a little easier to just see the one thing. And I have already selected where I want this slice to be sent, the file location. So I'm going to tap on that and it's opening up on my iPad and it's got Affinity Designer, yeah, I want that. And I click on Done, and it tells me that it saved that thing to that particular location. So now I need to go to my brush menu, which is back in the Vector Tools. Remember, this is a vector brush. I need to be in the Vector Persona. So I can tap on the brush, which opens up the Brush Studio. And at the moment it opens up on acrylics, but if I tap in the center of there, my other folders come up and I've got one which is labeled Sandra's, which is ones that I've created. Add a new brush into this or to make a new brush, click on the menu on the top of the bar next to the push pin it looks like a paragraph symbol. Do that and go down to New Textured Image Brush. Tap on that and click the design that I want to put in. Just tap on it quickly and it's going to have made that into a brush. Okay, the design that I had, I discovered when I went to edit the film, you couldn't actually see the design because of the colors and the lighting. You literally couldn't see it in the brush menu. So this is just an excerpt with a different piece of design in, which was done in exactly the same kind of way, just with that slice tool. And I can just show you the various controls that we've got here. So we have the width, the size variance, and the opacity under the properties. Under the texture, we had the 
head offset and the tail offset. I haven't investigated that, but I'm assuming that's going to be points at either end. And then under the controller, this is what controls the effects of the properties that you are putting on. So you've either got no effect at all, or you've got pressure, or you have speed, or you have anti-speed, if you like. <laughs> the inverse of the velocity, or you have it back to none. Now, because I want this to be a complete normal ribbon with no variation in it, I don't alter any of these settings. When it comes to the body, when you first look at your settings, you'll probably find it is on stretch mode which makes it look a bit peculiar and which stretches the design through your stroke. For most patterns I'm going to be doing, I'm going to want a repeat instead. Then when you come to the corners, it says overlap, pull or fold. I haven't investigated those fully yet. I will do so at some later date. And if it seems important, I'll make another little video on that. Now, this is where your, uh, your selection, your slice tool comes into effect again because if you've got little gaps on the edge there there's a little line don't know if you can see it a little red dotted line and you can bring it in a little bit so that's why i said if you get it too wide and you want to narrow it that's fine but you can't do anything about the depth of your selection so now i've got my brush in the menu here i need to select my brush on the left hand side to actually activate the brush tool. Now the other thing which is important is that down here you have a context menu and you want the stroke to have no fill. If it has a fill it's not going to come out the colour that you expect it to come out. You want it to have no fill. The opacity is fine. If I go to this funny looking shape it takes me back to the menu and I can edit it further if I want to. And this is again a version of the controller. I'm going to make this bigger. Now you can choose to set it like this or you can tap on it and you can put the numbers in. Now when I do this, this is what I get. This is what my brush looks like. I'll take it down a bit. There we are. I'm going to go back, get rid of that little lot, and I'm going to pick out a shape. So I'm going to pick out, oh, I'm bored with rectangles, let's go for something different. Let's go for a teardrop shape, and I'm going to draw a teardrop here, and pick up my selection tool. And there's my teardrop. Now what if I want one of these lines to be the outside line? All I do is I pick that up, and it applies it automatically to the shape that I have got selected. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Isn't that fun? So that's how you do the vector brushes. You can see I've actually got one here, which is a picture of my cat's eyes, <laughs> which ends up looking like a snake pattern almost. So you can use all sorts of things. Now, what you can do is what I did with this one. And basically, I just imported an image and I took my slice from the image. If you already have a PNG made, you can make your selection from a PNG quite happily. It's not a problem. You do it exactly the same way. So if you suddenly think, oh, yeah, that bit of that painting would look really good as a brush stroke, you can do it. If you're lacking artistic inspiration, don't forget that you can also use the artistic text button there to import characters or pictorial font characters, depending on what you've got on your iPad. This app will access your iPad fonts. And if you've got pictorial fonts, you can use those. I get my pictorial fonts from defont.com and there's loads of them that you can choose from. So that's it for the vector side of the brush making. Hope you've enjoyed the video, found it useful. Please subscribe if you haven't, hit that like button and leave comments down below. I'll see you again soon.